Welcome back to another episode of Twisted News. We have a good one for you today, so thanks for tuning in. First up, we're going to be looking at Highway 20 out in Oregon. Because it's an infamous stretch of road that's claimed the lives of several individuals, And then we have some sobering remarks about the future from the godfather of AI himself. It's not all doom and gloom, but some information you should be aware of. Get rid of the scary mysteries, twisted news. Number one, the ghostly trail of Highway 20. Highway 20 in Oregon might look like any other road in the U.S., but For some time now, it's carried a haunting legacy. A series of disappearances and deaths that spanned over a decade, and it was all due to the work of one man. Any local knows that this stretch of road is where several individuals met grim fates between the late 1970s up until the early 90s. At the center of these mysteries was John Arthur Aykroyd, a seemingly ordinary highway mechanic the Oregon Department of Transportation. One of the earliest accounts of meeting this man's dark side comes from Marlene Gabrielson. She would be the only known survivor of this man's attacks, and his first. Back in the spring of 1977, after a dispute with her husband during a rodeo in Sisters, Oregon, Marlene found herself in need of a ride home. A beat-up old truck, driven by none other than Aykroyd, seemed like her ticket back to her three-month-old twin baby girls. In the interior of the truck, stripped of its door handles and window mechanisms, didn't raise any alarm bells for the young mother as she recounted, I thought there was nothing wrong. All I knew, it was just a beat-up old truck and I was going home to my kid. I noticed that there was no, like, covers on the doors, There was no handles and no roll-you-down thing. didn't even faze me that this was a trap. Well, she fell asleep during the ride, only to wake up about an hour later when he pulled off to the side of the road. There, he grabbed a knife, and then he dragged her into the woods. Ultimately, after assaulting her, with Marlene begging to be brought back to her kids, he then drove her home. The others, though, who crossed paths with Arthur weren't so lucky. The Christmas of 78 was a tragic one for the family of Kay Turner. A vibrant 35-year-old woman, Kay was known for her athleticism, having conquered marathons and climbed challenging peaks. Yet it was on a simple morning run during her holiday in Camp Sherman that she disappeared. Despite an extensive search and her husband's pleas, never returned. Police did find two sets of footprints in the snow off Highway 20. One belonged to Turner's Nike shoes and the other a large man. There were signs of a scuffle in the snow there, but that was it. Fast forward to the mid-1980s, Aykroyd married Linda Pickle, becoming the stepfather to 13-year-old Rashonda Pickle. Living in a remote area in Santium Junction, Rashonda led an isolated life with no children her age around. Then one fateful day, she too disappeared. And in the spring of 92, two friends, Melissa Sanders and Sheila Swanson, went camping at Beverly Beach State Park with the Sanders family. These girls were 17 and 19 years old respectively, and growing restless, so they decided to hitchhike to see if they could get to town for some fun. Instead, though, they were never seen again. The trail led detectives back to Highway 20 and Aykroyd, especially after an eerie encounter at a local restaurant. See, the girls had been regulars at Sherry's restaurant, as at Aykroyd. On the very night that they disappeared, Aykroyd was seen returning to the State Highway Diner, covered in blood, with a chilling explanation of hitting a deer. And yet, no deer carcass was ever found. Investigators were relentless, though, connecting the dots between Aykroyd and the numerous victims. For unknown reasons, over time, Aykroyd had talked a lot about Kay Turner and how he had picked her up and was the last person to be seen with her. It wasn't really until the disappearance of his stepdaughter, though, that got him on the comp's radar. 
and then, of course, coming into Sherry's covered in blood. Eventually, they brought him in, and he was successfully prosecuted for Kay Turner's murder, where he received five life sentences. However, the full extent of his crimes may never be known. As the cases were developed against him, police started thinking he may be responsible for other missing persons in the area during that time frame. He had somewhere between two to seven victims, but in 2016, Aykroyd passed away behind bars, taking many of his secrets to his grave. Number two, a conversation on the edge. On Sunday, October 8th, renowned computer scientist Jeffrey Hinton sat down with Scott Pelley for an interview on 60 Minutes. The atmosphere was sober, charged with a mix of intellectual curiosity and concern. Hinton, often dubbed as the godfather of AI, was a lifetime of innovation behind him. He had insights that peered into a future that were fascinating but also very ominous. The biggest takeaway being that if we're not careful, AI could one day take over humanity, that not one person in the world can predict if or when this will happen. In fact, Hinton was so frightened by the prospect of where this new technology might go that he quit developing it altogether. Their conversation began with a question of humanity's grasp on artificial intelligence. Hinton, with characteristic candor, acknowledged a concerning lack of understanding by the general public, explaining that the evolution of AI was no longer a linear journey mapped by human ingenuity, but a complex, unpredictable dance of learning algorithms and data that seemed to have a life of its own. AI's presence has been felt globally, particularly in healthcare, where it's become a powerful tool for diagnosis and drug design, but with these advancements comes unsettling questions. AI now is not just processing information, but making decisions, learning, and evolving autonomously. The line between program machine and a sentient entity becoming more blurred with each passing day. In short, the machines are now teaching and telling doctors what is wrong and what to prescribe, and their knowledge far more massive than any one person. Hinton was candid about the uncertainties that made him apprehensive. AI systems were writing their own code, evolving beyond their initial programming. The risks, autonomous weapons, unemployment surges, systemic biases, they were all real and palpable. Every advancement bore the seed of potential catastrophe. Despite the red flags, a complete understanding and a clear path forward remained elusive, and so, it was time to back out. Hinton's revelations were not a call of impending doom, but rather an invitation to caution. The call was for robust regulations, international treaties, and an aggressive pursuit of ethical AI development. It was an appeal for a collective pause and reflection, an acknowledgement of the precipice on which the world stands. The age of AI is upon us right now. A lot of us joke about the idea of it taking over one day, but it's more nuanced than just the rise of the machines. It's going to get tricky, especially because AI can offer so much, but if we're not careful, serious problems could arise that are dangerous and irreversible. So be careful the next time you're on ChatGPT. It's our modern-day Ouija board, and who knows what we're collectively summoning. So there were two of the scariest and strangest news stories that we have for you today. I'm Andrew, and I want to thank you for tuning in. If you like this, we also have exclusive content that you can check out completely free. We cover a variety of other weird and strange topics that you don't find here on the regular channel. Plus, there's a whole library that you get access to. To check it out, go to patreon.com slash scary mysteries. You won't just be getting more content, but also helping to support us. Thanks again to all our current Patreon supporters. Thanks for tuning in. I'll see you guys in the next one.